Hello, welcome, and thanks for watching this product focus series brought to you by Keystroke. Today's video will be focusing on Opt in Manager. Opt in Manager is a tool that we developed to more efficiently collect opt in permissions from your customers and contacts so that you can send them emails with their permission and within compliance for anti spam legislations around the world. This product is very easy to use and it's very easy to harvest the permissions from your contacts just through general lookups and sending out emails. So here we're going to go through a demonstration of how you would do that with a few particular contacts. So once, once Opt-in Manager is installed, it'll create a special contact permission field that will be used to show you whether the contact has accepted or denied your email request to opt in to future emails that you send to them. I've placed that field right here uh, so I can see it at a glance. Now here under Opt-in Manager at the top, under the settings, this allows you to set many options for the product. So here under General Settings is where you need to create your own account that will create an account ID that you will retrieve at the Opt-in Manager website and paste it in here. This is a unique key that is tied to your account for setup. You also have the ability to add your own company logo there that customers will see when they click on the link in the opt-in email that is sent. Also, you can edit what data will be added to the contact permissions field in ACT right here. You'll also need your email settings uh, that need to be configured in here. So Outlook itself doesn't really deliver the email but it does use your email service provider's email settings, which you can get from your IT company or your email service provider. This email delivery tab is extremely helpful uh, if you plan on sending a large number of emails out at the same time. It's really important not to send too many using your email settings, and we recommend really not sending more than 500 emails at a time and if you're going to use more than that, we strongly recommend subscribing to a third-party uh, mail delivery service. But these settings will help you avoid having your email server blacklisted. To start, we're going to I'm going to create a lookup of the contacts that I would like to send the opt-in email to. And for this demonstration, I'll just be sending out to a couple of contacts. As you can see, I've created those two contacts right here. And you can see that on both of these contacts, the email permission field is currently blank. So the next step really is to click the opt-in manager at the top and then choose to send emails. This first screen allows you to modify the email template that will be sent to the chosen contacts. You can edit the subject line. You can change what the hyperlink to accept or deny will say, and you can edit the template to modify the text right here. So now we're going to go ahead and click on send emails at the bottom, and you'll notice now that you do have the option to send to uh, the current contact, the current lookup, or to all contacts. So for this example, I'm just going to choose my current contact lookup, which is these two contacts that I did my lookup on. And we really strongly discourage you from ever using send to all contacts, because that's really the whole point of this is to have a targeted solicited permissions. And sending it out to all the contacts really obviously defeats that purpose. So we're going to choose the current lookup and then click OK. This is just confirming to me that it's going to send to two contact emails. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes to continue. You can see the progress bar down in here at the bottom. And now we get the message that the two emails were sent out successfully. So now let's go ahead and go to email. And here it is. Here's the email that was sent to this contact. As we can see, it's just a standard email, normal text, so it should, uh, should be able to get through most filters. And now we're going to go ahead and click on here 
to accept or deny. And of course, this will be your client or your contacts that will be receiving these emails uh, that look like this. So they will then click on this to accept or deny. It's going to take us to a web page. So this is what will be displayed for the customer. Now this is what's being displayed from our server. You can see that you've got the optinmanager.com and then you've got the unique ID that's looking back directly to that particular contact in your database. So the branding is here. This is what we uploaded in the opt-in manager settings. And you can obviously upload yours. You know, putting your own company name and obviously modify the text is a good thing to do. Um, and we do, we do provide you some text in advanced um, in advance, but you can use your own if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on opt-in. And you get this thank you for your response and you can close this browser now. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back into ACT. And we can see that the contact permission field is still blank right here. So after the email or emails are sent, uh, and the recipient completes that action that I just did, Opt-in Manager synchronizes your database with the online results stored on the server. So occasionally, you'll want to click on Opt-in Manager here and select to update contacts. This will grab the information from the server and populate each contact's contact permission field with the option they chose, and you'll see that right here. Now for privacy purposes it's really important to understand that the only information that's stored on the server is the contact code and the contact response none of which is really worth anything but we've gone the extra step of once you sync it removes even that information from our servers so please ensure that all of your customers and all of your contacts that their privacy is not at risk at all. Doing that updating contacts will work with all the contacts you sent the email to, assuming that they have clicked and accepted or denied. So a couple of additional features that are important to note here. Let's say someone emails you and just wants you to email them the unique link because maybe the email got garbled and the delivery they want um, went to the wrong place. So in instead of going through that whole process and sending that whole email again, um, you can go right here choose generate unique link and, and that link is then now copied to the clipboard and you can simply click on reply to the person's email maybe this guy sent me an email I can now hit reply here and just paste in that unique, that unique link and maybe with some text here to say go here to accept or deny or whatever you want obviously. Uh, then when the recipient gets this they'll click on that which will take them back to that web page where they can accept or deny. So really all of this would be of no value if there wasn't proper history recording. So let's take a look at what history was recording here. This is the contact that we chose to accept with and I'm gonna go ahead and click on history. Now as you can see here uh, in history here's an email showing that uh, the the contact permission email went out to the contact and another history right here showing that they accepted or declined. So if there's ever a challenge as to whether or not someone actually provided you permission to email them you've got a very clear history that was created here saying that they did grant you this permission. Now one of the benefits of having this information in your database is that you can create groups that really allow you to go back and email again and again. For instance, a group that would say have a dynamic population uh, based on a query that would say email field contains data and contact permission field does not contain data. The beauty of creating such a group is that people accept it will dynamically depopulate those people that are that are uh, providing you the permissions from that targeted group until you get down to zero. So you can send it once a month, every couple months, and not only are you going to get the people that haven't replied, 
but you're getting people that you've added to the database, new to your database through the normal course of business. Opt-in Manager is a tool that every business should use to protect themselves from the new anti-spam legislation. So I hope this demonstration has been insightful. You can learn more and purchase this tool at the keystroke.ca website and learn everything about this legislation so you can be above the competition when it comes to anti-spam legislation and emailing your contacts.